Hello and good day. Welcome to the third lecture in this simulation series. And in this series, we will be dealing with how to model separators, right? So, two-phase separators, tanks, and three-phase separators, right? So now, uh, we'll be starting off immediately. Let me just add some components and we we'll get into the simulation environment. Um, let me see. Okay, so we'll be learning how to model them. Um, okay, then our fluid packages can go be missing. So I will just be illustrating how to model separators. So we are in our simulation environment now. Now, in your um, model palette, you have separators. You have your two-phase separator. This is your two-phase separator. You have your tank, and then you have your three-phase separator. So now all of them are grouped together because they probably uh, function in a very similar way so they are grouped together now if you um, if you click this and you come to let me see um, okay yes you see that they have uh, a section called type in the reactor in the parameter section you see type now you can actually change a separator to another form you can change it to a three phase separator right or you can change it to a tank if you want from inside this um, form right because they are they are grouped together and they function in the same way right so now i will quickly model um this separator i will quickly model it I will model all three of them. So the first thing is to let me see. The first thing is to create your material streams for the inlet and the outlet. Right? Inlet and outlet. So that's the first thing you do. Then you specify your feed stream. So you specify it, you have you specify your feed stream now um zero point one. You see so now for a basic um, two-phase separator model all you need to do is to specify your feed stream right so once you specify your feed stream the product stream composition and properties will be calculated by the software right all you need to do is specify your feed stream and it's also the same for the tank and the three phase separator so i'll also be doing that i'll be doing something similar with this as well so where did i stop with my numbers you have um okay let's do um, let me see okay this one i'll just use let me use this yes so 
again i will be specifying the inlet stream of this tank right so this is more like a storage tank right a storage tank you can use it to represent a storage tank in your model if you your model requires a storage tank you can make use of this right so i just want to show you how to model it now so these values i'm using are assumed values just for illustration then you click ok so i have specified the inlet stream now once you specify the inlet stream you see that the tank also has solved right so just specifying the inlet stream will actually solve your separator and your tank equipment the same with the three-phase separator so we have gas and hl now let's specify the feed as well so i've created i've created the feed stream so i'm going to specify the feed stream so the feed stream is also at atmospheric conditions right atmospheric conditions then i specify composition okay so we have you no know, okay so we have this right and once you specify this as well that is the feed of the three-phase separator the two-phase separator will also solve now let's um let's go back to our um let's go back to our slide so um now for separators separators basically they work based on a mode of operation and what they use to separate mixtures is the difference in density of those components that make up the mixture right so when when you send in when you send in a feed mixture now the feed mixture here it comp it comprises of gas then uh, that is light hydrocarbon then heavier hydrocarbons then liquid right so it's a mixture it's a mixture and then you want to separate it using either a two-phase or a three-phase separator now that separation would occur based on the difference in densities of the individual components right so these components have different densities right so the separation will occur based on the difference in densities of these individual components such that the lighter components will go up or will come out from the top of the separator while the heavier components will come out from the bottom of the separator right so this is how separators work both um, two-phase and three-phase separator for two-phase separator you have two outlets right two outlets for the passage of vapor or gas and then the bottom for liquid right so gases will come out from the top now if you open this and you go to composition now you see the top is stream 2 while the bottom is stream 3 so from the top you see that a large amount of gas or vapor is coming out from the top you see 0 0.9686 for methane and you know methane is a gas so you see a lot of gas is coming out from the top of the two-phase separator and then you have water and the heavier hydrocarbons coming out from the bottom of the two-phase separator 
right and if you check the three phase separator as well you will also notice almost the same thing so go to worksheet and then you come to composition come to composition now for composition you have your feed then you have your gas outlet then for um, three phase separators you have three outlets you have your gas outlet you have your light liquid and then your heavy liquid right so you have your gas outlet your light liquid and your heavy liquid in this case we have um from the composition we have our gas is mostly methane then light liquid we comprise of this um heavy hydrocarbons then the uh, heavy liquid is majorly water so you have that heavy liquid has a um a composition of one for water right a composition of one for water then gas has a composition of 0 0.9688 for methane then you will notice that from the light liquid stream from the light liquid stream you have these heavier hydro hydrocarbons coming out from it so you see the you have 0 0.33 for c11 0 0.33 for c12 and 0. 33 for c13 right so you see that the light liquid is the heavier hydrocarbons or a combination of the heavier hydrocarbons then the heavy liquid is water what it means is that water has the highest density in this particular mixture right in this mixture of gas light liquid and heavy liquid water has the highest density and that is why it is coming out from the bottom of the three phase separator right so generally this is how these um separators work right so let's go back to our slide um like i said a two-phase separator can be used to separate um substances with um two phases right so you have a liquid and vapor phase you can use a two-phase separator but if you want to separate a mixture with three phases you have gas liquid and heavy liquid gas light liquid and heavy liquid you make use of the three phase separator the three phase separator is typically used in the oil and gas industry to separate crude oil from uh, gas and water yeah it's used to do that that's a that's a very good example of where you can use the three phase separator then um okay so the next thing is we have uh, a lot of things that can be specified right in terms of modeling uh separators yes in terms of modeling separators there are a lot of things that can be specified now um let's open this so like i said initially if you want to model a separator all you need to do is uh create your inlet and outlet streams create your inlet and outlet streams then specify your inlet stream right specify your inlet stream the properties and the composition and then your inlet stream will solve and your separator will also solve as well right but if you want to specify more things there are a lot of other things you can specify for example if your um if there will be a change in temperature as your mixture passes through the separator then you can uh you can attach an energy stream right so you can create an energy stream for that so for example now when you create an energy stream you will now be required to specify more data in this case you would either specify duty you specify duty the duty of the energy stream or you specify temperature right so you can either specify duty at the bottom here or you specify any of the outlet temperatures so for example you specify 40 you specify 40 degrees celsius as outlet temperature now when you specify 40 degrees celsius isis then calculates the duty of the energy stream right so that is one thing you can specify in a separator model you can also do that here if you like you can attach 
an energy stream right when you attach the energy stream then you specify the duty you specify the duty You specify the duty so let me see yes so once you specify the duty the temperature will be calculated right so you can either specify duty or outlet temperature right so that's how it works for adding energy streams to separators now um, let's come back here so from here we have parameters right we have parameters now in the parameters you have um you have pressure drop right and the two types of pressure drop you have are the inlet pressure drop and then the um vapor outlet pressure drop now let's go back to the model so you have your inlet kpa and your vapor outlet kpa now these two pressure drops will define the outlet pressure drop sorry these two pressure drops will define the outlet pressure of the separator right both the top and the bottom outlet right with respect to the inlet pressure of the feed right right so now um for the inlet pressure drop when you specify a pressure drop for inlet pressure drop right it determines how much pressure is lost from the feed right so when you specify an inlet pressure drop high sys subtracts that inlet pressure drop from the pressure drop of the inlet for example if i say the inlet pressure drop is let me say 20 kpa for example or before i do that let's go and look at the um let me still put zero there now let's go to the worksheet and look at the pressure we have now in the worksheet we have pressure for the inlet is 1 atm and that's the same for both the um top and bottom outlets right the top and the bottom outlet 101.3 kpa 101.3 kpa now let's go back to the parameters if you change the inlet pressure drop to let's say 20 kpa now now if you go back to the worksheet you will see that the pressure of the outlet has reduced right it's now less by 20 kpa right so when you specify your inlet pressure drop hysis calculates the outlet pressure drop by subtracting that inlet pressure drop from the inlet pressure of the feed right so it is 20 it is 101.3 minus 20 right that is how you get the outlet pressure of both the top and the bottom products of your separator right so the inlet pressure drop defines how much pressure is lost right from the inlet feed right so that's how you calculate your pressure using the feed pressure and the inlet pressure drop right so you just do the inlet pressure of the feed minus the inlet pressure drop then for the other one you have your vapor outlet now this vapor outlet affects only the top product of the separator right so for example if you specify 30 as your vapor pressure sorry your vapor outlet if you specify 30 as your vapor outlet let me see now if i go back to work if I go back to worksheet i now want to specify the outlet um, temperature now just so that the process can solve right now if you check the uh, pressures of the three streams you'll see that they are all different now the inlet stream is still at atmospheric condition the bottom outlet is 81.32 which is the inlet pressure minus the inlet pressure drop right while the uh, top 
products or the vapor outlet is 51.32 now this 51.32 was gotten from subtracting both the inlet pressure drop and the vapor outlet pressure drop from the inlet pressure right the inlet pressure is 101.3 now if you subtract this um 20 and 30 from 101.3 you will get 51.32 right so the inlet pressure drop is associated to both the top and the bottom outlet while the vapor outlet pressure drop is associated only to the vapor outlet right so the vapor outlet pressure drop does not affect the bottom of the separator it affects only the top right so that's how these um, pressure drops work that's how they work now apart from this pressure drop you can also specify reactions for your separators so your separators can operate as your separators can operate as reactors right you see there is a place to specify your reaction set which you are supposed to have specified in the simulation basis manager that is if a reaction is occurring in your separator so let me show you an example so in this one I specified a reaction in the simulation basis manager now you see this is the uh, reaction details the conversion reaction now you go back to the simulation environment you see that the reaction is attached to the separator so the separator is now operating as a reactor right even as the separation is going on then you now check the composition now in the um in the feed we have two inlets for the separator you have an inlet for naoh then you have an inlet for h2so4 this is a neutralization reaction so you have naoh and h2so4 entering the separator as the reactants and then you have water and na2so4 which is the salt are formed in the process and you have them coming out from the bottom of the uh separator then you have water coming out from the top as well right so that's how it works so you can you see this the top and then this is the bottom and you have your products coming out from the bottom of the column as well as the top so you can actually use a you can use a separator whether a two phase or a three phase you can use them as um as reactors yes you can use them as reactors so that's it what else do we have um let me see okay let me come here okay so let's go back to our model our simulation environment now that's for reactions let me see okay then we have rating we have rating in the rating tab you specify um, details about your reactor you can specify a lot of details uh, the geometry the um, the orientation right the shape you want it to take the orientation whether it is vertical or horizontal then also the uh, dimensions as well you can specify the dimensions just like you do in reactors or you do in vessels other vessels you can specify the dimensions then you can also specify um because separators usually have nozzles right so you can specify their geometry as well and then where they are supposed to be located right their location whether at the top at the center or at the bottom of the separator right so you specify their their uh, location and everything then you can also specify heat loss models that is if you are doing um, dynamic simulation with your separator you can specify heat loss models then also you can you can specify level taps all these are for are mainly for dynamics right but for a a simple um, modeling of a separator you can just specify 
your dimensions, your um, separator dimensions, and then geometry. Then you also have um, you have the um, carryover, right? Carryover setup. The carryover setup. Now, what the carryover does is when you are separating um, certain uh, components in a liquid mixture or in a mixture that is fed into the separator. Now, you would have um, different phases. Like, for example, you, in this two-phase separator, you have a liquid and gas phase. Now, in the liquid phase, you may have a little amount of gas in it. And in the gas phase, you may have a little amount of um, liquid in it, right? Now, the when you have your liquid phase going through the bottom and then you have a little amount of gas added to it now that combination or that little amount of gas that is in that liquid phase is referred to as a carryover right so if you are having for example in the three phase separator you have the gas you have the light liquid and the heavy liquid now if you have a little amount of light liquid in your heavy liquid that light liquid in the heavy liquid is the carryover right because normally it's not supposed to be part of that heavy liquid because all of them have been separated into their different phases but then because um in real life you cannot get 100 percent um, efficiency or 100 percent separation of the mixture so you will be having little little amount of different phases in different phases right so you have little amount of gas in liquid and you have little amount of liquid in gas you have little amount of light liquid in heavy liquid little amount of heavy liquid in light liquid right so that those um um uh the intersection of those uh, uh phases right while the separation has already occurred is called carryover so if you have a small amount of um, light liquid in your heavy liquid that that is called that light liquid is referred to as the carryover in that heavy liquid now um, let's uh, let's continue so you have your you have different ways of um, specifying this carryover now you see what I was talking about. You have light liquid in gas, heavy liquid in gas, gas in light liquid. So what you are supposed to specify is the fraction of those carryovers in the other um, phase. So for example, you say light liquid in gas. So how much light liquid is in the gas? How much heavy liquid is in gas? How much gas is in light liquid? How much um, heavy liquid is in light liquid how much gas is in heavy liquid how much light liquid is in heavy liquid so you are supposed to specify them as fractions right so you can say for example 0 0.01 light liquid is in gas or for example you can say 0 0.02 light liquid is in heavy liquid so you are supposed to specify them as fraction but this is in terms of the um, feed then you can also do it in terms of the um, products right and then you can use the um, correlation based method to specify your carryover so that's it for carryover then um let's okay this is our worksheet then you have dynamics right for cases where you want to do um, a dynamic modeling of your uh of your um simulation you want to do a dynamic model and there, there is a separator in your process you would have to specify certain parameters here before you enter dynamic mode now let's go back to the um, sizing so for sizing you can specify volume let's say we specify volume as um, let's assume one meter cube now when you specify volume ISIS automatically calculates the um, diameter and the height of the um, separator or vessel that you are dealing with, right? So we come back here. Now, after specifying volume, automatically the volume value is added here. The volume value is added here. Then the um, liquid volume is also calculated based on the 
liquid volume percent right so this value here is the liquid volume percentage and it signifies um the amount of of space in the separator that liquid can occupy the amount of space so your liquid volume percentage is um 50 percent right so what it means is that the 50 percent of the tank would have liquid in it right so now the volume the overall volume of the tank is um of the separator is one meter cube right and 50 percent is specified as the liquid volume percent right so the liquid volume is a multiplication of that um percentage by the volume of the tank so you have 50 percent is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 times 1 is 0 0.5 right so this determines how much um how much space liquid will occupy in your tank or separator right so whichever one you are trying to model right so that's what you do with um your liquid percent so you can actually increase it or reduce it to whatever value you like right so when you increase it for example to 80 you now see that the liquid volume is now 0 0.8 so the liquid inside this separator will be occupying 0 0.8 of the volume of this particular separator right the overall volume is one meter cube but the liquid um, portion of the uh, mixture will be occupying just 0 0.8 of the overall volume right so that is how that works also you have the um, quick size option for your separator separator you have your quick you have the quick size option that can be used to actually determine the dimensions of the separator so i think it's also nice to actually use the quick size because i think hisis calculates these um dimensions based on the amount of feed that is um sent into the separator so when you click on quick size it calculates all the volume the diameter and the height right based on the um the feed into the separator right so you can actually use quick size if you don't have the dimensions of your separator right if you don't know what to actually specify as the dimensions you can just use quick size to actually um size your separator right then we have this option here called um enable where enable where now this enable where is um let's go let's leave this the enable where is actually used in three phase separators let's go there so here is our um geometry you can just click on quick size right you see that the value here is different from the one we had in the two phase separator now this enable where is required in this um is required in this um uh this three phase separator right the three phase separator requires the where now um let's look at the three phase separator what it looks like so this is a three phase separator right you have your inlets then you have the three phases you have the gas coming out from the top then you have the um light liquid right and the heavy liquid which is most mostly water most of the time is usually water now you have this demarcation here white demarcation here this demarcation is called a wear right a wear that's what it's called it helps to separate the um, light liquid from the heavy liquid so the light liquid goes over the wear right it goes over over it and then comes out from this outlet while the heavy liquid comes out from the bottom of the separator the three phase separator now you see that at this um towards the top of the um of the heavy liquid you have some light liquid on it right so you can refer to that as the carryover of the heavy liquid right so you see a little amount of the um light liquid is on the top of the heavy liquid right so if it comes out with the heavy liquid you can refer to that as carryover right because normally the light liquid is not supposed to come through this outlet 
but if a little amount of it comes out with it then that is the carryover of the heavy liquid right so you see that this um, light liquid is coming through over the wear this white demarcation right so that is the work that this wear actually does in a three-phase separator right so that is what you are actually enabling here when you click on enable wear right so that's why i said it's used for three-phase separators so when you enable it you are supposed to specify some details right some details are required after you have enabled it right so you have the um, wear height you are supposed to specify the wear height then the wear position right so you have the wear height the height of the wear from the um, bottom of the separator to wherever it's supposed to stop then you have the position the position is the distance from the inlet to the place where it's going to be set or where to position so that distance is the um, uh, position value that is being requested for let me see yes where position yes where position is the distance from where the wear is to the inlet of the separator that's your wear position so you are supposed to actually specify these values here specify those values here before you now um, everything is set actually before everything is set you are supposed to specify such details that is if you are trying to um, model your separator rigorously right so that's how this works right so i think i've covered most of these um, sections in your separators i think i've gone through most of them right so for your practice um for your practice from the last um assignment i gave you you should be having something like this right you should be having something like this don't bother about the naming the naming does not matter but you should be having something like this i told you to create a material stream in the first lecture yes with these details i asked you to create a material stream and then with this composition right and then i asked you to find some uh, values right using the uh most likely the envelope abi was it the envelope or one of the analysis i asked you to do stream analysis on this then i asked you in the second lecture i asked you to attach a a valve attach a valve to the feed stream which is this and then the valve pressure drop is 70 kpa so you should be having something like this you should be having something like this in your model by now so if you are still having any struggles with modeling this just revisit the previous lectures and you should be able to do this now so for this for a continuation because we are modeling a we are modeling ngl fractionation that's what we are trying to model with this that's where we are going with this right so to continue this particular model you will be adding a two-phase separator to it that is the assignment for this particular tutorial so you'll be adding a two-phase separator to your model right so a two-phase separator so for practice you attach a two-phase separator to your model right so this is your model so attach a two-phase separator to it right you create your outlets your top and bottom outlets of the separator right a two-phase separator now you um leave the um, pressure drop and the liquid percent values as default so you are not making any changes to pressure drop or liquid percent values right and also neglect temperature changes right neglect temperature changes and then after you are done modeling the two-phase separator you determine the mass flow rate of the top and the bottom outlets of that separator right what is the mass flow rate of the vapor and liquid streams of the separator right so model your separator and then determine the mass flow rate of the outlet streams of your separator right so that's it and with this we have come to the end of this particular lecture if you have questions on what was taught in this lecture kindly let me know in the comment section like this video share with your friends and then 
subscribe to this channel if you have not done so so that you can get future notifications on process modeling tutorials thank you for joining me do have a good day